What's going on fellas? Today we're checking out this 3.6 megawatt diesel burner for Jason. We're going to see what this bad boy can do. This thing is impressive. I could not believe how well it performed. It did better than yesterday's test. All right, Jason, let's go for a little walk here. Um, when you initially fire this thing up, you're going to have some air bubbles in the line, and that can cause flame outs initially. I'm going to build a special little T adapter that allows you to purge the fuel system first before getting started up in case that becomes a problem. But for the most part, once you get all the bubbles out of the system, all the sputtering and hiccups will kind of die down on you. It just takes a second. I like to turn the unit up as high as I can get it. This right here we're looking at is... Oh, there's some more air bubbles there. See how it just kind of sputters. Some burners will actually go out because of that. I'm actually excited to see that this thing didn't go out. It's showing that we've got some really good combustion characteristics inside there. Look how white that flame is too. It's just blazing white and hot. It's so hot that I can hardly stand to be right here where I'm at. Probably shouldn't be standing here. But uh, definitely pretty hot. This is actually 2.3 megawatts because that's the lowest reading we have on the bird meter. And uh, look at that spray of fuel just blasting in there. That's our concentric nozzle. We're right at about a gallon a minute there. I'm going all the way up to 3.6 kilowatts here. 3.6 megawatts, I'm sorry. It's so hot I have to come over here and turn it back down. Um, I started to burn myself a little bit there. Just a little bit too warm to not have a fire suit on for a 3 megawatt flame being right next to me like that. This thing has a huge turn down rate. It can uh, be turned down very low. I'm just kind of messing with different levels right now to show you what different settings it has and, and what its turn down rate is. People are always asking me what my turn down rate is. and uh, As you can see, this thing is down to maybe, I want to say that's probably around 80 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts maybe. Still a substantial amount of fuel blasting into that thing. But uh, we're at about 40 PSI. Which is good. You said the plant air was, or actually, I'm sorry, 50 PSI. You said the plant air was at 80. So this whole test was running right around 50 PSI on the regulator here. Um, you can go really lean with the, the mixture and get a very, very hot flame. This flame can be burned all the way down to the blue color. But I know you guys probably have low NOx requirements and stuff like that, so I'm not even going to bother messing with this thing on those high temps because you guys will probably never use it in those conditions because of the, the NOx regulations and all that stuff. But uh, for the most part, this thing can go as high as 3.6 megawatts. That's what we've maxed out here in the video. You could probably do a little bit more if you had more air. My air compressor just can't can't cut. That's all I got. So I was only able to max it out at 40 psi. That's how big that nozzle is. So definitely a monster. This thing burns a lot better than the burner we tested yesterday. Um, hate to say it, but man, it's just the way it handles those air bubbles. And look at that flame. Just even the characteristic of the flame, there's no fuel dripping out of the front. We do got a little bit of a detachment of the flame from the combustor, but it doesn't matter. That flame is white hot. Like it's burning my face off. I literally can't stand here much longer. It's so hot. So definitely a brilliant little contraption. I'm very glad that it worked out this well. Right there is where I go crazy and hit 3.6 megawatts. That's uh, just so hot that I kind of freaked out for a minute and uh, almost ran away from it. Then I realized that I got to just turn this thing off. But I wanted to show on the camera that I wasn't in fact that hot as far as output goes. The combustion is pretty stable. It looks like it's fluttering a little bit, but as you can see, there's actually flame almost all the way up to the back of the view the nozzle there and I would imagine if we could get the pressure higher 
we can get a lot more ferocious of a flame. We're at 40 PSI on the regulator right there. The compressor's drained. We don't have any more air to offer. Can't really get a fuel reading here. Then I just kind of start messing around with it a little bit, see what it can do. Um, the heat's so intense, you really just don't want to be anywhere near it, but i got to show you guys what this thing can do. I also want to point out, this can slide inside of a 6-inch um, oven receptacle, whatever you call it. I don't know what those um, entrances are called. You see here, i got a PWM controller to run the fuel. So well... I would say that's a champion. This thing performed better than expected. And it also performed better than this unit, in my opinion. Not that this did bad, but uh, the flame profile was just phenomenal. I think you got yourself a winner here, Jason. Now, bear in mind, this can also burn gaseous fuels like propane and natural gas. However, the trick with natural gas is you may need a booster blower or something like that or a booster compressor. Typical natural gas pressures are very low. You're not going to be able to hook this up to a 1 PSI natural gas. You're going to need like at least 30 PSIs to provide 2 megawatts of fuel through an orifice this small. I'm going to do a propane test next just to kind of show what it can do. It's going to be hard to get 2 megawatts out of a propane bottle. We're going to have to turn the bottle upside down and boil the uh, propane in a va vaporization coil. So, about lit myself on fire there just from the radiant heat. <laughs> 